Okay, so let's jump into our first session, which is on interregional cooperation and EU priorities. You will hear a variety of complementary perspectives from the national, European and regional speakers. So please, I would like to ask you to put your hands together and give a warm welcome to Dr. Ian Borch, Parliament Secretary for the EU Presidency 2017 and EU Funds Malta. I'd like to welcome on stage, I believe she made it, Dr. Joanna Drake, Deputy Director General, Directorate General for I Environment European Commission. Your hands together. Okay, just give her some time there. Meanwhile, I'd also like to join me on stage, Mr. Jean-Marc Veninon, Quality Manager Officer, Macro Regional Strategies, Directorate General for Regional and Urban Policy, European Commission. Nice to meet you. She made it, she made it. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I'd like to start off with Dr. Ian Borch. Could you please tell us in a nutshell how Interreg Europe fits in the Maltese presidency priorities? Thank you, Pauline. And I'd like to thank you all for participating in this event. Um, I know that it is a tradition now that uh, the annual event is being held in the country holding the rotating presidency of the Council. And it's our pleasure to have more than 500 participants here with us today. And uh, I'm pretty sure that you will enjoy uh, not only the conference, but also our islands, and hopefully to see you back. Also, um, perhaps, with regards to a, an interreg project. So, uh, the presidency, Malta, and also the priorities of, of, of the program itself. I think that it's a, it's a particular time that we are experiencing, especially um, considering the uh, political environment, not only in this particular region, but also uh, across uh, the European continent, within the European Union, and also um, across the globe. Um, but uh, considering also these challenges, the biggest concern, I believe, that every uh, politician and uh, policy maker should have at the moment is the, uh, the trust of the European citizen in the European project. And uh, that is why, as a Maltese presidency, we decided that our uh, presidency team should be uh, reunion, let's reunite, Let's not reinvent the wheel, but we need to reunion. And uh, also, especially through our acts, through our work, once again, do our utmost to convince our European citizens that this union is working for them. And whilst we have challenges that are dividing us, for instance, uh, how to face and how to, how to um, react to the uh, migration crisis, uh, we still have some very important assets. One of them is the single market. Another, another issue is uh, the way us Europeans um, conserve and protect our environment, but also our economy, which is now also growing once again. And uh, I think that the priorities also of uh, specific programs like Interreg Europe are addressing these immediate issues that, rightly so, our citizens are still putting forward legitimate questions. And we all together, not only politicians, but also um, policymakers, stakeholders like yourselves, we owe our citizens a legitimate answer. 
for some time we will be experiencing a European Union that will be shrinking. We are losing an important uh, partner, we are losing an important member state. Yet again, we still have some other uh, countries waiting to join us. And also in this regard, the Maltese Presidency, together with the Commission, is working very hard with regards to the, to the uh, accession process of various candidate countries. Mm -hmm. Um, this week, it's not only about Interreg Europe, it's not only about other events, but it's also about reminding everyone that this project is going to turn 60 years old. And uh, this Friday, this Saturday, in Rome, our head of states and governments will uh, meet and not only commemorate the 60th anniversary since the Rome Treaty, but also commit themselves towards the future. And uh, in order to reach each of our 500 million citizens, it's not only about politics, it's not only about the politicians, but it's also about you, about your members, about uh, our citizens and uh, projects um, emanating from such program can clearly help to deliver this message. Very good. Thank you, um, Dr. Ian Borch. I'd like to turn to Dr. Joanna Drake. We'll put the spotlight on you now. Thank you so much for joining us. We know that Interreg Europe is making a special effort to attract projects on environmental topics in the third call. Can you explain why cooperation matters for the environment? First of all, I have to apologize to everyone for arriving late. It was a nightmare just to get into Valletta, I'm sorry to say, but uh, it, yes. that's the reason. I'm really sorry for that. We also have a traffic <laughs> problem we'd like to sort. <laughs> um, but I think, first of all, I want to also um, say how inspired and motivated I feel by seeing such a huge participation in uh, my favorite capital city uh, in Europe with 523 who have registered uh, from 29 countries. So if that's not already a sign of cooperation, I don't know what is. And that's great because that's about European spirit and that's what it's about. Um, now, why do, are we emphasizing why myself as a commission official from DG Environment why am I here emphasizing the importance of cooperation? Well, Europe is what it is, and we are about to celebrate, as Dr. Borch has said, the 60 years young of the European Union, <laughs> because uh, it has been always made up, constructed on the basis of challenges. And we are living in another era of very challenging challenges, um, least not of which is environment. Um, we hear all the time of other types of challenges in the world that we need to suppress. Of course, we talk about terrorism, security, about human rights, hunger, which is still on the agenda of in 2017. But environment, we're living it, breathing it, drinking it, eating it every day. We, we take so many things for granted around us. The birds, the wolves, they have no borders. The river basins, the pollution, air pollution, water. This morning I was talking, I was hearing a report on BBC on the Ganges River in, in India, a very holy river, but very dirty. And of course, they are using it also for the water supply. And they are going to say that it is a, a live entity from now onwards. Why? Because it requires protection. We do have to cooperate because unless we embrace challenge, which Europe has always done, and us as Europeans have always understood the importance of that, we will never, ever be able to enjoy for much longer what we take for granted today, what I've just mentioned. So, of course, along the years, we have understood this. We have, Europe has been at the center of creating an international regulatory policy framework policy agenda, I would say, not only of climate change, because this is what maybe Europe is most known about, but in fact, we have been doing it on so many other things, like, for instance, the protection of wildlife, like the protection of having clean air. It's really taking up in different cities now. This is why we are more and more wanting, for instance, um, uh, electrification of mobility, for instance, having cleaner mobility 
which is very close to our citizens, something we take for granted as well every day. What about the drinking water? We are, for instance, this year going to revise the drinking water directive. Why? Because we also want to go into a fitness check into whether it's still actually 40 years after it's been created. Is it really um, tending to the needs of tomorrow, not of today? What about water reuse? What about, for instance, the manure that comes from Germany that go, or Dutch, Dutch manure that goes into German fields, but then puts nitrates into Austrian wells? This is why interregional cooperation is important. We are talking constantly about circular economy. Again, Europe is going to try, I would say, will. Uh, take the international agenda on circular economy. But this won't happen if we just sit and do nothing about it. If we do something about it, about actually making things happen on mm -hmm. the ground, making reuse of our waste, making reuse of industrial surpluses, which could actually be good for another region outside uh, the so-called border of the country. This is why interregional cooperation is really important. And this is why not only have European policy uh, frameworks in the EU, but also the international policy frameworks have tried to converge onto a common agenda, but Europe has also put its money where its mouth is. And I think one of the areas where not only there are already good practices, but we need to be a little bit more creative, more constructive, both on what we take for granted, nature, Natura 2000, via Horizon 2020, via the LIFE program, but also what we need to construct in order to inspire the world, and that's the circular economy. Mm -hmm. I'd like, to tell you, I'd like you to tell us in a nutshell, how do you feel Interreg Europe can contribute to this effort and everything you're mentioning? Exac exactly because it is a fund, it is actually engendering cooperation, it is a program that actually could link up with other programs, like I mentioned, the LIFE program, like the Horizon 2020 program, and therefore the common practices and also the culture of, of cooperation via different regions, inter-regional, within the EU, the practices are there, we need to build upon them, be more creative and take them beyond. This is how Europe has always remained relevant, by reinventing itself, and this is why we're celebrating six years of Europe's youth. Thank you, Dr. Joanna Drake. I'd like to turn to Mr. Jean-Marc Veninot. We'd like you to explain to us the key features of the European Commission vision for Interreg Europe. In particular, what are the Commission's expectations for Interreg Europe? Well, I I'd like first to also thank you very much for your massive participation, which is for us a strong encouragement to, to further and strengthen cooperation. I mean, it's, it's essential. I mean, it's been told already by uh, Mr. Drake and Mr. Borg that, in fact, there are two main aspects in this very specific and particular program. One is obviously about cooperation, which we, we need so much in, in those uh, times of, first, uh, all those countries having to face global challenges that uh, cannot uh, require only uh, national regional uh, replies and who could pretend today that they would be able to, uh, to, to find solutions to those, to those global challenges uh, in, in isolation. I mean, this is so important to, to, to find those solutions together that this is also the reason why we're trying through this uh, very specific program uh, to, to get into common solutions, joint solutions on uh, specific topics that we we'll try to focus as much as possible. Uh, along the lines of our, of our uh, EU 2020 policy, meaning that in this program we have tried together to, uh, to highlight and emphasize the importance of innovation, of support to SMEs, environment, energy efficiency, which are really at the core of our, of our priorities. And there is, of course, another, uh, uh, another very important uh, point that I would like to, to emphasize, is that indeed we also have to, to defend common values. And I think it's a part of the role of cooperation to uh, really uh, show that there is no other way uh, in Europe uh, to together uh, make sure that those values that are the, the, the foundations of our construction are safeguarded in, in, a, in a moment which, uh, in which uh, some, uh, some parts, some countries and some populations are somehow questioning those values. And I think this is even more important uh, than any other, uh, other um, uh, initiative that uh, this program could, could, uh, could take. And of course, one of these very specific features of the program is that 
it delivers immediately uh, in line with, of course, the immediate context of uh, uh, the, the way that information, uh, knowledge, uh, financial flows and so on are just circulating all around Europe and even the world, that this program is able to also deliver, uh, I would say, almost immediate responses uh, to, um, to, to, to those challenges. And uh, it can do it uh, in a very efficient manner, and I would say at lower costs, because this is a very cheap program. If you compare it to the volume and the size of, of our policy, of cohesion policy, it represents not even 1% of, uh, of our policy. And with 1% of it, you're able to exchange uh, all around Europe and even above Europe, beyond Europe, uh, between different partners to find the, the, the appropriate solutions to your, to, to your challenges. And I think this is also something it, it's very important to, to, to underline, underline and emphasize, that we can do it with very little money. And uh, in a time also when uh, there are so many people who are just questioning the, the use of public money, I think this is a very efficient use uh, of this public money. With only uh, not even 1% of our budget, we are able to, 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 to put in contact all those stakeholders around Europe uh, who work together to find appropriate and more efficient solutions to the, the global challenges we are all facing. What impact do you expect Interreg Europe to have on regional and national programs financed directly by European Reg Regional Development Fund? Well, precisely. I mean, this is exactly what you are trying to do, in particular in this current period. And uh, without preempting on what, what will be uh, decided for the future. I think this is uh, a good link that we're trying to develop between uh, national regional programs and policies and, uh, and our uh, cooperation uh, initiatives and actions. The reason why I told you that we, we had tried in the current programming period to emphasize and to focus on key priorities uh, of the EU policy is, also, of course, also because it's the best way to, to match uh, the policies that have been supported by, by the other programs, uh, uh, be they uh, our uh, cohesion policy programs, but also our other policies and programs like Life Plus, Horizon 2020, and so on. I mean, th these are the, the core priorities where we think we have also to try to somehow introduce a kind of change of mindset in the, in the way that policymakers and politicians are thinking their policies uh, altogether. And I think that cooperation. Uh, in general, inter Europe is particu in particular, should be maybe thought of uh, upstream in, 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 in the way that the, the policies are, are shaped, so that uh, the, the, the good reaction and maybe the good questions for those policymakers would be how can, uh, at least, should I consider cooperation as a part of the reply in, in, my, in, my, uh, in my regional or national policies? And if so, in which way should I cooperate with the others? And how can it really uh, make my policy uh, more efficient and stronger uh, in, uh, in, in, in its implementation phase if I introduce some, uh, some uh, cooperation components into it? And I think this is the, the, the way that we're trying to link the program with the other uh, national, regional, and even direct managed, managed programs so that uh, hopefully in the near future there is this kind of reflex that cooperation indeed can bring into the policies mm -hmm. at national regional level something more efficient and, and more, uh, and more uh, useful for, 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 the, for the policies themselves. So this is the way we're trying to, uh, to link um, all those people who are so important in, in the room today who are developing projects, ideas, initiatives, exchanging practices and so on and how they could uh, disseminate and, and, and make the link with uh, I will not say traditional programs, this is not the case, but in the way that those regional national programs and, and those who are implementing those programs are, are, are developing uh, ideas in their own territory. And in somehow we would be able to amplify the, the role of these kind of cooperation programs into the, into the national and regional policies. And this is the, 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 the aim uh, of our policy. Thank you, Mr. Veneno. Finally, we have a video message from Ms. Valérie Latar, who is the Vice President of All the France Region, who represents the Managing Authority of Interreg Europe Programme. She could not join us this morning, however, she has sent us this video message. Mesdames, Messieurs, chers acteurs et amis européens de la coopération, même si c'est à distance et par le biais d'un enregistrement, je veux saluer et remercier chaleureusement la présidence maltaise et tous ceux qui ont contribué à la tenue du troisième forum interrégional du programme Interreg Europe. 
événement annuel du programme à la Valette. Je ne vais pas vous présenter le programme Interreg Europe qui sera au cœur de vos échanges durant les deux prochains jours. Je souhaitais par contre évoquer l'engagement européen ambitieux de la région Hauts-de-France que je représente et sa forte expérience dans la gestion de programmes européens. Pour la période 2014-2020, la région Hauts-de-France assure des responsabilités importantes en tant qu'autorité de gestion de huit programmes européens, dont trois programmes interreg, portant sur les trois volets de la coopération, mais aussi du programme Action Innovatrice Urbaine. La coopération est au cœur de nos priorités et de nos ambitions, et c'est avec une immense fierté que nous observons les succès de la mobilisation autour d'événements tels que celui-ci. Réunir autant d'acteurs de toute l'Union européenne, ici à Malte, dans le cadre d'un programme interreg, géré par une grande collectivité du nord de l'Europe, montre que la coopération a encore de beaux jours devant elle. Coopérer, échanger, chercher et trouver ensemble des solutions à nos problèmes communs reste la façon la plus concrète de faire vivre le projet européen dans un contexte de forte tentation du repli, et cela, bien évidemment, nous sommes tous mobilisés pour l'éviter. Avec un secrétariat conjoint très engagé, dont je veux souligner l'efficacité, une gouvernance experte et des acteurs créatifs, le programme Interreg Europe incarne parfaitement l'esprit d'ouverture et de coopération. Ce programme est un outil à votre service, sollicitez-le, Utilisez-le. Vos idées de projet, vos suggestions, votre énergie participent au succès de cette belle aventure. Et ce succès, cette aventure, la région Hauts-de-France est très fière de l'accompagner. Mesdames et messieurs, je vous souhaite maintenant un très bon et très riche événement. Merci à toutes et à tous. Thank you there to Ms. Valerie Letard. One final word from each of you, and then obviously we'll hit our next session. Oh, whilst uh, wishing you all a pleasant continuation, um, I'd like to reaffirm our commitment also as a Maltese presidency uh, towards programs like Interreg Europe, but also all the other um, programs which form part of the cohesion policy. As a presidency, uh, I will convey two important ministerial meetings. Uh, the next one is the formal General First Council uh, of April taking place in Luxembourg and, and also an informal ministerial meeting in Malta in the month of June whereby we will also kickstart the discussion for the post-2020 and there we have uh, three main priorities basically having a forward-looking policy, a more visible one for our citizens and also, um, as much as possible, uh, simplified uh, policy for uh, the, those administering and also for the users. Um, we are also of the idea that whilst looking at the cohesion policy um, as an investing and an investment policy, we should still stick to the objectives of the treaties, that is, uh, remain committed to reduce the disparities between uh, the various regions of the European Union in order to have a fair and uh, equal opportunities for our citizens. Thank you once again and wish you a pleasant continuation today and tomorrow. Thank you, Dr. Ian Borch. Thank you, Dr. Joanna Drake for joining us and Mr. Jean-Marc Venino as well.